Hello, 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 mighty companions. This is Earl Purdy. I want to welcome you to A Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. A Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. And we're going to start and talk about the lessons of love. What are your love lessons? What is a love lesson? And what's the message that you get out of any kind of attack or what you perceive as attack? What is the message which the Course calls crucifixion? So what is that message that you get out of crucifying yourself? And then what is the message that we actually got from hearing about the crucifixion of Jesus? What in the heck does crucifixion ultimately mean at a personal level? So it's a very powerful, powerful uh, section that we're going to cover that really deals with anger and fear and attack and how to go beyond that and how to deal with that. We're going to start out, it's going to be on page... 91, Chapter 6, The Lessons of Love, page 91 in the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles, page 91 in the Blue Course in Miracles book. And we're going to start out, as usual, with our theme song, which is, I am not a victim of the world I see. So take, take this opportunity to breathe and take an opportunity to get settled in, and uh, here we go. Of the world 
world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I've done to me. No, no, no. I'm not a victim of the world I see. There's a lesson, uh, there's lesson number five in the Course in Miracles workbook. There's lesson number five in the Course in Miracles workbook, which is, I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. You're not a victim of the world you see. You're not a victim of whatever that situation is, whatever that circumstance is that, that you've been dealing with this week, whatever's on your mind right now that you think is a problem or a challenge that you have to deal with. You are not a victim of that situation. I'm not a victim of that situation. I'm not a victim of that person. I'm not a victim of that relationship. I'm not a victim of that relationship. You're not a victim of that relationship. You're not a victim of that situation. You're not a victim of that circumstance. You're not a victim of that situation. You are not a victim of that circumstance. You're not a victim. You are not a victim. You are not a victim. We're going to be on page 91 in chapter 6, that's the lessons of love. If you want to get anything out of the Course in Miracles, you need to learn the Course in Miracles the way the Course in Miracles says you need to learn the Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles says you need not believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You don't have to accept these ideas. You need not accept these ideas. You don't even have to welcome these ideas. So what did I just say? You don't have to believe it, accept it, or welcome it. You don't have to believe this, accept this, or welcome this. You do not have to believe this, accept this, or welcome this. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. I'm the divine repetition teacher and your remembering coach. And you're remembering what the Course in Miracles says, coach. And uh, we come together so that we can remember the Course. We don't come to my class so we can analyze the Course. And the first four letters of analyze is anal. A-N-A-L. And that's not what we're here to do. We're not here to be anal about the Course in Miracles. Uh, and besides, anal lies. Get it? Lies. Lies. All right. So some of these ideas, don't, don't sweat it. You may actively resist it. Do you hear me say this to you, Course in Miracles student? You might resist something that I say. You might resist something that the book says. Something that I say from this book, even though you may think you've heard it all, there may be something I say that startles you. And also, nobody's asking you or me to judge at all. We, we're going to take our robes off for an hour and realize that we're not coming to this, listening to this, watching this, so you can judge it. Um, if you will use it, you'll see that it works. If you use it, it, you will see. And if you're not using it, then you can't rightfully say it doesn't work. If you're not applying it, then your, that argument that the course doesn't work and isn't true does not hold water if you're not actually using the ideas. Because I guarantee you, if you use the ideas, you'll see that the ideas are true. Another thing from studying and teaching the course for over 40 years is, it says over and over again, take, do me slowly. Do me slowly. And so it's not about how fast we move, it's about how much we remember anything that we're hearing. So, uh, so the first thing that I wanna say is that the relationship of anger to attack is obvious. Do you know that it's pretty obvious that people attack people after they get mad? Yes. There's a relationship between anger and going off. Uh, but the relationship between anger to fear, that isn't always so apparent. It's not obvious to you that a person who's angry is also a person that's afraid. We don't think of people who attack and who are angry as being people that are afraid. So the Course in Miracles says, that, you know, you can see the fact that when you get angry, you might attack. But what you don't get is that you are angry because you're afraid. So whoever you are angry at, you are afraid of. You are afraid of the people that you're mad at. You're afraid of anybody you are angry at. Fear is connected to anger. So we don't realize that. What? The relationship between what? Fear and anger. But we do kind of recognize the relationship between anger and attack. I get angry, I attack. But I don't realize that when I'm getting angry, it's because I'm afraid. So the Course in Miracles says that anger always involves what does anger always involve? Anger always involves 
a projection that we're separate from each other. See, when I'm angry at you, I'm projecting that you're separate from me in some way. I'm projecting that you're different from me in some way. So that's why anger must be ultimately accepted as what? Anger must be ultimately accepted as your responsibility. You are responsible for for your own anger. You're responsible for your anger. You're responsible for your anger. The other person isn't making you mad. The other person isn't making you mad. No one else is responsible for your anger. No one else is responsible for your anger. You are responsible for your anger because you are responsible for the meaning that you're giving to whatever is going on. And the meaning that you're giving is what's making you mad. The meaning you're giving to the situation, circumstance, that's what's making you mad is your interpretation and meaning that you're giving to what your mama said last night is what's making you mad at your mama. It is not what your mama said that's making you mad. It is the meaning you're giving to it. It frightened you in some way. At some level, you felt like there was attack. And you're projecting that separation on your mama. So you're responsible because you're the one that's doing the projecting of the meaning. I'm responsible because I'm the one that's giving you meaning and what you say meaning and what you do meaning. So how can you tell when you've accepted responsibility for something? What he says, well, rather than blame, being blamed on somebody else. So if I'm not taking responsibility, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault. I'm blaming you. I'm blaming you because I don't want to take responsibility for how I feel. I'm blaming you. And then I can make you responsible for getting me out of my anger. I can make you responsible for now making me feel good. I don't even have the responsibility for making myself happy. That's not why you think I'm in a relationship with you, Father. I'm in a relationship with you so you can make me happy. Right? Right? So the truth of it is that there's only one, you know, there's only one reason why you can think attack has occurred. You think attack has occurred according to A Course in Miracles is because you believe you've been attacked. I'm angry at you because I believe you hurt me some kind of way. I'm angry at you because I believe you're hurting me some kind of way. I'm angry at you because you have attacked me some kind of way. And since you've hurt me, and since you've attacked me, guess what is justified? What's justified is me now going off on you in return. You hurt me, I'm going to get you straight about that. I'm justified for attacking you because I believe you attacked me, so it's okay for me to attack you because I believe you attacked me. You hurt me, I can hurt you. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. I know that those of you, uh, you're so enlightened, you can't relate to anything that I'm saying right now because you've never, I can see that look of disbelief in your eyes. Like, yes, do you believe there are people like that? Can, I just wanted to tell y'all, I knew you might not be aware of that. So I wanted to make sure today that I let you know that there are people out there <laughs> who sometimes feel like they've been hurt by someone and attacked by someone, so they feel like they can attack and hurt them. And now, here's the and, and what's the key part of that? Uh, uh, you are hurting me and attacking me, and I'm no longer, and I'm in no way responsible for it. I'm not responsible for what I'm going through with you. I, 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 our relationship has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Everything that's happening in it is you. If you were different, I'd be happy. If you spoke differently, I'd be happy. If you acted differently, I'd be happy. If you just behaved the way I want you to, then everything would be all right. So the issue is you being different so that I can be happy. So therefore, I'm no way responsible for this attack. I'm not responsible for this anger. I'm not responsible for what I'm feeling at all. You all are. Anybody responsible? Anybody responsible to that? <laughs> so what kind of premises have I just shared with you? I just gave you three totally irrational premises. No reasoning person, no sane person uses these premises. What premises are those, Earl? that uh, I have been attacked, so me attacking back is justified, and I'm in no way responsible for anything that's going on. He says, those, that's what, so if I was going out with somebody, and I was on Match.com, or I was following, getting ready to form a new relationship, 
then I would be listening very carefully to the person and trying to be interested instead of interesting. Most people are always trying to be interesting when they go out with somebody. They're not trying to be interested. I've, I've, I've gone out with new people in my life and they never asked me one thing about myself the entire evening that I was with them. Mm -hmm. They talked about themselves the whole time because they were trying to be interesting. Okay, and so the course taught me how to turn it to my advantage. Guess what I started doing? Listening. Guess what I found out? They were revealing to me everything I needed to know about them if I was listening to them. Right? Because if I'm listening to them and they're still talking about any kind of anger and grievance toward their old partner, whoever they've been with, then I understand that they think they've been attacked, which means they probably attacked back. And they also think they're not responsible for what happened in that last relationship. So therefore, I know they're going to do the same thing with me. They're going to hold me responsible for anything they're upset about, too. See, people don't listen. They don't listen to what people are saying. Everybody reveals themselves. And, and the safer a person feels with you, the more they're going to communicate anyway. So therefore, if I'm with somebody and they're not ever communicating with me and not saying anything in my perception, in my perception, there's some level of safety that hasn't happened yet. This person feels trusting and relaxing enough to talk to you about what's really going on or what they really think or what they really feel. Have you ever seen the quietest person in the world talk their can off with somebody else besides you? Have you ever been around somebody that seemed quiet and then you see them with somebody else and they were going like that? Yeah, yeah. So the Course in Miracles says that the once you come up with these three irrational premises, which is I've been attacked, it's okay for me to attack back and I didn't have anything to do with it, then I'm, come, I'm going to come up with one more irrational conclusion. And what is this new irrational conclusion? That uh, you are worthy of attack, but not love. I need to get you straight. That's what I need to do, not love you. You, you, you are worthy of being attacked. Back, you've hurt me so bad and you've attacked me so bad. You know what you're worthy of? You're worthy of attack back. So those are the four rational conclusions. What are the four rational conclusions as I want to learn the course? Well, first of all, that I've been attacked, so now my attack is justified in return. I'm not responsible for it and you are worthy of that attack. You des in other words, you deserve what you got. Okay? Uh, now, what is it that you can expect from insane premises? Well, <laughs> insane conclusions. If I have insane premises, I'm going to come up with an insane solution. So how do you get rid of your insane conclusions? How do you get rid of your, what is, what is your insane conclusion? The idea that somebody's hurt me and therefore I can hurt them back and then I'm no way responsible for it, and they're worthy of the attack that I'm going to give them. I don't want to be that way. I don't want to attack people. I don't want to not take responsibility. So what do I need to do? Uh, I need to undo the insane conclusion that you all are worthy of my attack. So how do I get rid of that idea that you are worthy of attack? Well, you, here's how you do it. You consider the sanity of the premises. You consider the sanity of the premises on which your conclusion rests. How sane are those premises? How sane is the premise that people are always hurting you, so therefore it's okay for you to hurt them back, and you are no one, you're not responsible for anything that you're going through in any relationship, and the other people deserve that attack that you are giving them? He says, well, how do you get rid of that idea? He says it right here. You get to consider, how, is that sane? Is that a sane way to look at things as if you have no power over yourself in any form or fashion? that you have no control over your emotions and feelings and thoughts at all, that you're just a puppet that's being played by everybody around you and you're dancing to everybody else's thoughts, feelings, emotions, and desires. You're just this poor little victim. So the Course in Miracles says, is that a sane premise? Is that even a premise that you would want to be the premise that you live by? No, 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 no. 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 The crowd scream to the to the top of their lungs. <laughs> no, pretend it's an abs game, y'all. Pretend it's an abs game, please. Okay, five hundred thousand people came down to the Civic Center Plaza to celebrate the winning of that cup of the, the abs game. I repeat, five 
100,000 people came down to celebrate that victory and to see them ride down the street. I'm in no way judging and condemning that. I don't want to have an abs assassination. I'm not in any way saying there's anything wrong with that. All I'm saying is we turn out for what we value. And we are endlessly enthusiastic about what we value. And that's what I ask the Holy Spirit to send me and to, and to have within me people who are attracted to the truth, who are just as enthusiastic about their own happiness and their own peace and their own abundance, which is what this is promising, as they would get about a sporting event. They are giving us an example about the way we should be about God, the way we should be about loving each other, the way we should feel about wanting to have sanity, wanting to have sane premises. So I'm going to now give you for free with the love offering requested for, <laughs> uh, the three uh, sane, actually the, the one, two, three, right, the three sane premises that you're supposed to replace the insane premises. What is the insane premise? I've been attacked. It's okay for me to attack back. I didn't have anything to do with it. And you deserve that. You deserve it. You deserve to get yeah, what absolutely. you got back from me. You absolutely deserved it, okay? So what is the premises I want to use to counteract that? Here it is. You cannot be attacked. No one can hurt you. What? What? That's the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. You cannot be hurt. You cannot be attacked, okay? That sounds like to the worldly mind in me, that sounds like the irrational, insane premise. Notice that the truth is exactly reversed. So if I say to you, you can't be hurt, you can't be attacked, then uh, he's just, the courts are just saying, I'm, I'm telling you the truth whether you believe it or not. I didn't say you didn't believe you could be attacked. I didn't say that you didn't believe you could be hurt, that you could be hurt. I didn't say you didn't have an experience what you call pain. I'm just saying, telling you, you cannot be attacked. What else? Attack has no justification. There's no justification for hurting somebody. There's no justification for hurting anyone. There's no justif justification for attack. Didn't say you didn't feel like that was a bunch of crock. Didn't say that there was a part of you that wouldn't want to believe that at all. What did it say? It just said the truth. What is the truth? Attack has no justification. What's the last premise? And this is the main premise. Remember this one if out of nothing else I've said to you today. You are responsible for what you believe. You're responsible for what you believe. You're responsible for what you believe. Not your parents, not your childhood, not the books you read, not me, not the course, not authors, not your friends, not your relatives, not culture, not society. You are responsible for what you believe. Whatever you believe, you are responsible for it because you are the one that's choosing to believe it. You are the one that's choosing to believe it. You, if, you, if you believe that you are a person that no one can love, you're responsible for that belief. You're 100% responsible for believing that no one can love you. You're totally, you're totally 100% uh, responsible for believing that your childhood hurt you and that something in your childhood hurt you. You're responsible for what? The belief. You're responsible for your beliefs. And the court says a belief is what you accept is true and, and that, it, that your experiences create your beliefs. You're much more likely to believe that putting your hand on a hot stove will burn you if you have the experience of putting your hand on a hot stove. You won't have any doubt in your mind about that. You will absolutely believe that. Why? Because you've had the experience of it. Most of us haven't had the experience of unconditional love. Most of us haven't had the experience of totally unconditional love, no matter what we do, no matter how we are, someone forgiving us, being loving with us, not trying to make us feel guilty, appreciating us, telling us our value all the time. Most of us have not experienced that. So therefore, when you hear stuff like you love by a creator that would never punish you and a creator that would correct every mistake that you've ever made and also correct the, the results of that mistake, 
uh, that you are loved unconditionally, that what loves you and what created you, created you eternal. And so your true self, your spiritual self, your real self is an immortal self and your real self never dies and your real self can never be hurt because your real self is not a body. Your real self is not your body. Your real self is not your body. Your real self is not your body. You are not your body. You are not your body. So if you think you're your body, you're going to think you die and you're going to think that you uh, could experience pain and you could experience joy because these are all the things that a man experiences when it identifies with just being a body. So the Course in Miracles is saying, when it says you cannot be attacked, it's talking about you. It's talking about your spiritual identity, who you were really created to be as God. It's not talking about the you that hops up and down when you stub your toe. It's not talking about to you that I'm the holy child of God. Oh, that mosquito just bit me. God, God Almighty, I can't hardly take it. You know, that's that an infinitely powerful being is not like doing that, right? So when someone tells you you can't be heard and you live forever and you just came from about some, what appeared to be somebody's funeral last week, then it'll look like what the Course of Miracles is saying is not true. So that's why it's telling you that you're responsible for what you believe. So that means if you really want to believe in love and truth and innocence and let go of your belief in a fear for punishing God and guilt and anger, then you're responsible for letting that belief go. You're responsible for letting that belief go. And then people ask me, well, how do you change your mind? And it's, it's, it's very easy to answer, but most people in my perception and experience don't do it. You know what it is? Repeating it over and over and over and over again. That's how you change your mind. Whatever it is you want to believe, you just tell yourself that over and over and over and over and over again, and you will start to believe that it's true. But if you don't ever repeat it to yourself, then you don't change your mind unless you tell yourself what you want to believe. That's how you change your mind. So it's very important if you think one way that you don't like and you want to think another way, then your butt had better start telling yourself something different than what you normally tell yourself. You're going to have to get off your butt, Earl, and you're going to have to start taking responsibility for how you feel and what you think, and you're going to have to start telling yourself the things that you want other people to tell you. You have to do what if you really want to have people start to tell you how wonderful you are. You better start telling yourself how wonderful you are and telling them how wonderful they are because what you give is what you're going to receive, and if you don't ever give it, you won't perceive yourself as receiving it, even if somebody's giving it to you. You won't even notice it. I love this book. I love this book. So then, then the next part of it goes, well, you know, I didn't know that Jesus of the Course in Miracles belonged to a modeling agency. But it says it right here. You've been asked to take me as your model. Every time I see that, I humorously see Jesus on the catwalk, you know. <laughs> That's his favorite pose. <laughs> like Madonna. Strike a pose. So how was I supposed to feel innocent about Jesus and God's son looking at somebody hanging off a cross like that, looking like that, staring at me with total hate and anger as a kid growing up in church? No wonder so many people come to the Course in Miracles and they get really re uh, have a lot of resistance to any talk about God or Jesus or Christ or Spirit or any of that. I don't blame you. I learned a bunch of stuff, too, that traumatized me in the name of religion and God. I believe the Course in Miracles is especially for people who grew up in traditional religious backgrounds that they see that, that they felt like limited them in some way. I think it's a niche teaching. I don't believe the Course in Miracles is meant for everybody in the form that it's in. I believe it's meant, it's meant for a very specific group of people who want to heal their relationship with their higher power by learning how to let go of the erroneous, fearful things that they learned in the past when they were children, to the point that they don't even want to acknowledge the idea that there could even be a higher power. It's, it's really interesting, which means I got issues with God. <laughs> I got issues. So you've been asked to take Jesus as the model for learning, or you could say, You've been asked to take love as your model for learning. If you got a problem with the word Jesus, you can always use love or fear with the Course in Miracles, and it will give you an instant modern language translation. That's how if you want to change it into modern language, just substitute love and fear. So I'm trying to work through any of the resistance that I have around Jesus that I learned. So I'm challenging myself to say words that sometimes I can have resistance to because I don't want any words to rule me. 
At the very least, I want to be able to be neutral about it. So the Course in Miracles says, guess what? I love, I love the humor of, these, of Jesus on the Course. He says, I was an extreme <laughs> example. <laughs> he said, I was a particularly helpful learning device. <laughs> I love that. Uh, an extreme example is a helpful learning advice. So we, Jesus represented a very extreme example to us. And he says, now the first thing I want you to get is what? What is it that I want you to understand about teaching? Everyone teaches. Everyone teaches and teaches all the time. You are teaching all the time. You are teaching all the time. You are demonstrating. What the Course says a teacher is a demonstrator. So that's the same as saying you are demonstrating all the time. 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 All day long you're demonstrating. And the Course says everybody demonstrates and demonstrates <coughs> all the time. So everyone teaches and teaches all the time. This is a responsibility. You have a responsibility, and you're teaching, and you're demonstrating all the time. And any time you accept any premise, do you know that any time you accept any belief, do you know that any time you accept any kind of premise, then you are going to demonstrate it, and you are going to teach it all the time. Whatever you think is true is what you're demonstrating. If I believe I don't like uh, Indians, then I'm going to demonstrate in my racist behavior toward Indians. Whatever, whatever the premise is I accept, I'm going to demonstrate it and teach it. If I accept that each and every one of you are loving beings that are kind beings that deserve happiness just like me, then I'm going to start to demonstrate that premise by seeing you that way and treating you that way and seeing your beauty. See, if you want to know what a person believes, it's whatever you see them demonstrating all the time. Pay more attention to their actions than their words, Pay, especially truth students. People on the metaphysical spiritual path have a tendency to think that they have achieved levels of consciousness that they haven't achieved yet just because they heard that they could be that way one day. So here, as soon as they hear, oh, I'm a, an infinite loving child of God, then they think they actually believe that just because they just heard that and read that. And the truth is, it's the truth, but you may not believe it yet. Because if you really believed that you were this beautiful child of God, you would be demonstrating it through your kind, loving, open, caring behavior. So your behavior is showing me that you don't really believe what you're telling me right now. It's just that simple. If you're angry, then I know that you're not taking responsibility for what you feel and what you believe. You don't, it doesn't matter to me what you're angry about. If you're angry, then you're coming from an irrational premise, like the way that you're feeling is somehow being created by me. And so now, uh, and if you get mad at me because you think I've hurt you and that was, that was never my goal to hurt you, that's your second irrational premise, is that somehow I've hurt you and now you got, well, what about if people really do hurt you? No matter what anybody does, it's still up to you how you're going to see it and how you're going to react to it. It doesn't matter what anybody does, you're the one that decides how you're going to see it and how you're going to react to it, no matter what anybody. So I'm not justifying unkind behavior. What the Course is doing is trying to get you to see that you have a choice in how you react to everything. And the way you react is determining how you feel. So if you want to feel good, then you have to let go of the three the rational premises and accept the premise that, you know what, you can't really hurt me. There's no justification for me trying to hurt you because all that's going to do is create hurt for me. It's not like I'm just, I'm not this guru. It's just that I've learned that whatever I give is what I'm going to receive. So I'm not attacking you back so much because I think all the time, because I think you deserve not to be attacked, as I don't want to be attacked. So I'm not going to give what I don't want to receive because I have learned through this that universal law is giving and receiving is the same. And so whatever I do to somebody, I'm going to experience that as being done to me at some point. I don't want that karma. I don't want that experience. So I'm going to not attack you because that's what I want is not to be attacked. Is that making sense to everybody? It's not I'm trying, I'm so concerned about you. I'm not that spiritual yet. It's, it's right? I'm not. I'm not, I want to get there, and this truth is teaching me how to get there, but I'm not sort of being pretend that I think about you as much as I think about me. No more than I'm going to believe that you think about me more than you think about you. You can say so, I don't believe you. And, and it's no, it is no need to pretend that we don't feel that way. It's okay to pretend that for all of us, we're at the center of our universe. That's not, you know, why should I feel guilty about being the way everybody else is? <laughs> you know, y'all just like that, so why should I feel guilty? I know you're the center of your universe. 
I know that. I know that. You betcha. You betcha. If we be honest, all of us would say that we look at things in terms of how it's going to relate to us, right? So the Course in Miracles is then telling you that Jesus is saying, uh, the, min the minute you're going to teach and demonstrate something all the time, that's a responsibility that you assume. The minute you accept or believe anything, you're going to start teaching it and demonstrating it. And nobody can organize their life without a way of thinking, without a thought system. So how do you organize your life? By getting clear about what you're thinking. What is your thought system? How do you think? That's how you organize your life according to what? How you think. You organize everything in your life according to how you think. You organize everything in your life according to how you think. So what happens when you develop a way of thinking? What happens when you come up with a way of thinking? Well, you're going to live by it. So whatever my way of thinking is, that's what I'm going to live by. I, my way of thinking is a course in miracles. I made the decision 41 years ago that I wanted this thought to be the way I thought. That I, wanted, I called it wanting this mind to be my mind. So I knew that this mind couldn't be my mind if I didn't know what the heck it was saying. So that immediately made me have to read it over and over. And I've read it over hundreds plus times. And it's why? Because I want my mind to be like this mind. Because this mind is so totally cool and so totally loving and so totally sane. And if thought creates your reality, if thought creates your reality, if thought creates your reality and you have thoughts that are unlimited, healing, beautiful, wonderful, loving thoughts, what kind of experience do you think you're going to have? You're going to have a life full of joyous, peaceful, loving experiences because that's what you think. So I made the decision that this mind right here was really a loving, conscious mind. So I wanted my mind to be that mind. So I knew the only way I could do that would be to keep reading it and studying it. Because if I accepted what it was saying, then I'm going to teach it. And I'm going to demonstrate it all the time. I literally went so far as to become an official teacher. That's how serious I was about learning this. Because I knew that no matter who comes and goes in my classes, I'm always there. So I'm going to hear every class that I do, right? I, there's only been a couple of times I've been after from my own class. <laughs> Especially since I've been in Colorado. So like, <laughs> uh, missed a couple of my own classes. <laughs> Even though I was there. <laughs> but mostly I've been in every class I have. So, also, yeah, when I think about it, uh, if you don't mind, put your info on this uh, list so that when I'm out of town, I can make sure that I shoot you an email and let you know I'm not going to be here. Ooh. Even though I don't plan on going anywhere for months. After all the traveling, I just did last two weeks. Y'all pretty much can count on me sure, being here. Count on me being a little postcard? You know. Uh, no, I'm not going that far. I'm not that spiritual. Oh, yeah. Uh, not, that's too much trouble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, my, my path is the lazy man's guide to enlightenment. That's what I'm trying to follow, is the lazy man's guide. How little can I do? And that's what this book says. He'll say, I don't know of anything that asks you in, in, a less of you that gives you more. He says, what could be easier than I'll tell you what to do and I'll do it for you? Now, I want you to come up with a plan that's easier than that. I'll tell you what to do. How power says, I'll tell you what to do and I'll do it for you. But there are just a few things I want you to do. I want you to realize that uh, whenever you're angry, uh, you're thinking somebody's hurt you, and that you can hurt them in return, and that you're not responsible for it, and that they're worthy of attack. You need to recognize you can't be attacked. Attack has no justification, and you're responsible for what you believe in about everything. You're going to teach all the time, and what you're going to demonstrate all the time is everything you believe and everything you've accepted is true. So you know everybody around you by their actions. Pay attention to their actions. Pay attention to their actions. Pay attention to their actions and not what they say. Pay attention to a person's actions and not what they say. I, I, I really want to hear the truth. I really want to hear the truth. The truth is so important to me. And then you find yourself tuning out two seconds after I start talking. That's not true. That's not true. It, you know what it means? It means that the person has not really come to the conclusion that what they're hearing is going to give them what they want. Because there's no way you won't give your attention to something that's going to give you what you want. And this, the books, so I'm not picking on anybody. This is just literally what the book says. If I really wanted a car and you were telling me that you had a key to a brand new car, and you were going to tell me where it is, and all I had to do is get the key and go get the car. I guarantee you, you'd be the most wide awake on the edge of your seat person that you've ever seen. 
Why? Because you believe that and listen to what I'm about to tell you is going to get you what you want, the car. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So get honest with yourself. What you are about, you're about the things you get enthusiastic about. That's what you're about. You're not about something that you don't get any enthusiasm about. I, I say it again. You're about this as much as you have enthusiasm about it and as much as you believe it's going to help you. I can understand if it's a person that's coming to you for the first time that the most you could ask of them is just being open-minded enough to hear what you're saying. That's why he says you don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to welcome it because if a person believes that they have to believe what you're saying, then that's going to bring up a lot of resistance. But if they understand it don't make you any difference in a sense, whether they believe it or not, you're not trying to convert them, guess what? I found that people would be a lot more open-minded about what they're listening to if they don't think you're trying to convert them. So the Course in Miracles is telling me step by step how to never be hurt and how never to be attacked. How? Well, the first thing you need to understand is as soon as you accept a way of thinking, you live by it and you teach it and you demonstrate it. And do, do you know that you have a capacity for allegiance to, you can be, I love this, he says, your capacity for allegiance to a thought system may be misplaced, okay? You may be believing something that's really not true, but you really, really, like, you know, Jesus died for your sins. Yeah, okay, that's a very popular belief. And the Course in Miracles says it's not true. Now, somebody who needs to believe that's true, then they're going to get really upset about it because they're living by that thought system. They're demonstrating that thought system. Uh, the, the court says nobody can die for anybody else. That, that just, that's not the way it works. Now, what Jesus actually did do was try to demonstrate what love looks like, that you are only love and that love is the only thing that's real, and to constantly try to teach us the power of faith and the power of belief. Everybody reads the Bible, they say, if you believe this, according to your faith, according to your, he would say that all the time. They would get here and say, well, according to your faith, be done to you. Then they would say stuff like, oh, you know, you can do greater things than what I'm doing, actually. You can actually do greater things than what I'm doing. See, all that powerful love and stuff, I don't, I don't know about you, but I didn't hear that that much. I was hearing I was going to hell and whatever, you know, everything that could make me feel guilty, that, you know, he, Jesus died for my sins. So, I, so it seemed like there was a, a voice of guilt there, that there was a voice of, uh, that was trying to make me feel guilty. And so the Course in Miracles is teaching me, no, somebody that loves you, they don't want you to feel guilty. They want you to feel joy. They want you to feel peace. They want you to feel joy. They want you to feel safe. They want you to feel loved. Someone who loves you, they want you to feel secure. They're not going to be attacking you. That's somebody that loves you would never, would never, would never attack you when they express in love. So then he goes, you have been faithful you have been faithful to a way of thinking that is not true and doesn't serve you. And that way of thinking is a way of thinking that says and somehow you are not valuable, you are not loved, you are not powerful, you are not innocent. So it's like, okay, so I do have the capacity for loyalty. I, 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 I'm defending old beliefs that I got from the world that don't even serve me. I'm still tempted to believe like what the world says about because I'm a black person that there are certain things that have to happen to me and there are certain things that I could never do because of the color of my skin. I heard that all the time as a kid, especially growing up in the South. All the things that I would not be able to experience and I wouldn't be able to do because of the color of my skin. So I thought God hated people who was the same color as me. When I was a kid, so was, but ever then, I did, I did, I, we, I'm screwed. I did something I don't even know what I did. You know, so I can still hang on to beliefs like that, and I'm responsible if I want to hang on to my childhood beliefs, but I'm also responsible if I want to say, you know what, that doesn't feel, that doesn't work for me, that doesn't feel right for me anymore, so I'm not going to believe in, in sin no matter what anybody else believes, because the Course teaches that your only responsibility is to accept this for yourself. It's that your responsibility is not to get your cousin and your uncle and your friend and your boyfriend and your pal and your girl. It's not about you trying to get them to get into the course and to get them to get into the truth and to get them to change you. Your responsibility is to accept the premises you say you want to live by so that you can start demonstrating it and teaching it. And then you're going to attract the people to you who are like you. People who are like you, they always recognize each other. People who are like you always recognize each other. I don't care how we're out, way out you are, how weird you are, how deep you are into the truth, how much you think you're so special and different from everybody else, you're never alone in anything. It's impossible for you to be the only one that's like you. It's impossible. 
It's impossible. It's impossible to be alone. So no matter what you believe, you can find other people that believe the exact same thing. There's going to be someone in that same thought system. So you never have to go through anything alone. But you have to remember, you can't be hurt. If you believe everything can hurt you, everything will hurt you. If you believe everything can hurt you, everything will hurt you. If you believe everything is attacking you, it will look like everything is attacking you. If you believe, if I believe that every person of another color skin for mine is a racist, then I'm going to meet the racists. They're going to show up to validate the belief that I have. If I believe that there are people who are loving and love people regardless of the color of their body, skin, that I'm going, to read, I'm going to meet other people who transcend those type of bodily thoughts. You have to be what you want to have. You have to become what you want to have. Stop expecting people to be nice to you and you're not nice to people. Stop expecting people to be so generous with you, but you stand as hell and don't ever share nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, the, that's the ego. That's wrong-mindedness. Wrong-mindedness is always expecting something you aren't giving from somebody. Right, because the universe is giving and receiving is the same. So you got people who have horrible tempers and totally impatient and criticize and judge, and they're looking, they're looking for this person who's loving and kind and patient that'll be on their little treasure map, that'll be on their little profile pages. You know, in other words, they're looking for people who absolutely have who who they don't have any of those qualities themselves. I want somebody that's confident and financially secure and totally loving and affectionate. And they they got depth and we communicate and we can you know it's like they, they, you just see this list of everybody be listening. And I always ask, would a person like that want you? <laughs> and then when the first time I heard that question, I thought, ooh, that's kind of intense. Yeah, if a person was that together, are you so together that they would want you? It's, you know, I just, just joke with me and go, there's hardly anybody on the floor right now that needs praying for a dysfunctional lover. <laughs> and I go, I want a person with a lot of flaws that we're going to have to work through together. <laughs> you know, and the truth is, you're going to meet people that are like you. You're going to meet people who are like you. You're going to meet people who are like you. You're going to meet people who are like you. You're going to meet people who are like you. You're going to meet people who are like who? You're going to meet people who are like you. Do you sometimes get angry and sometimes feel peaceful? Then that's with the, with the people that you draw to you and who are like you. They're going to be the same way. Do you sometimes feel very optimistic, but then you sometimes feel depressed? Well, then that's going to be characteristics of the people that you form relationships with and that you are attracted to. You, whatever you, however you are, you, got, you better be sure everybody around you is capable of that same thing. Whether they act it out or not, they're totally capable of that exact same thing. You're never around anybody that's on a higher level of consciousness than you are. Because you're going to bring out of them your level of consciousness. It's like having a radio with a lot of channels, right? Some people tune into channel 95 in Earl. That's the one, that's the Earl that's all kind of loving every second, right? Then some people tune into channel 14, which is the Earl that's crazy as hell, like everybody else. <laughs> And then they go, I don't know, you're talking about you spiritual. <laughs> I don't see, where's he at? You know, right? I'm a multidimensional being. You are a multidimensional being. People tune into you according to their level of consciousness. And you've seen that to be true because you've seen people be totally nice to you and then turn around and treat somebody else right in front of your face horribly. Why did that person pull, why did you pull the nice person and the other person pull the tyrant? It was you. You, everything is coming from you. Everything is matching your energy. So the easiest way to have really cool, wonderful, loving people in your life is to stop using the irrational premises of how everybody's hurting you so it's okay for you to hurt them back. You don't have nothing to do with what you're going through and, you, and what you experience. If you keep those premises, you'll keep being a part of a world that it looks like you're a victim of. But if you were to realize who you really are cannot be attacked, and you feel like there's no justification for attacking me, and I'm responsible for what I believe, you're going to go into another world of joy, and you're going to create and draw to you more love and abundance in your perception that you've ever seen in your entire life. That's good news. It means your happiness is not dependent on what anybody else does or doesn't do. It means your prosperity doesn't have anything to do with how anybody else is agreeing with you or not. That's good news. It means you don't have to stay stuck in that relationship that's driving you crazy, that job you don't like, or staying asleep to your true spiritual identity. There really is another way 
that you could be looking at things. And then people go, well, why don't I do it? Why don't I make the change? I hear what you're saying. Intellectually, I get it. But why don't I get off my butt? Why don't I do it? It's because, listen carefully, there's a payoff you are getting out of the situation you're in that you claim never changes no matter what you do. The payoff of whatever you're getting out of that means more than the solution that could free you of it. So I'm not going to make a move, Earl. I don't care how much you teach me as long as I see value in the life that I'm already living. And it's also already giving me some kind of payoff, even if I'm going through this problem that I'm telling you about. This problem is not enough for me to let go of the value of the life that I'm living that I'm not totally satisfied with. Whoa! And so what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You start taking responsibility for your beliefs. You start taking responsibility for your beliefs. You start taking responsibility for your beliefs. And then you start giving yourself new beliefs and new ideas. In my case, it was the Course in Miracles. For you, it might be something else. The Course in Miracles isn't the only way. The Course in Miracles isn't the only way. There's one truth, but there's a zillion ways of getting there. And if you're on a path that you have no enthusiasm about, get the heck off of it. That would be my advice. If, if this is drudgery for you, and every time someone says, let's do it, let's tune into it, you get exasperated, there's a very good possibility you are denying yourself a path other than the course that could be really pleasurable to you, that could be really joyful to you, that you would get the exact same result, but you would do it in a way that made you more satisfied, kept you more satisfied. So, so remember, when you're in spirit, you're feeling inspired. When you're in spirit, you do I look like I'm feeling bored? No, regardless of how anybody that's watching me is reacting. Because my happiness is self-generated. Thank God it doesn't come from you. Thank God it doesn't come from you. And when I say you, I mean generic you. I'm not talking about particularly you sitting up here. I love the fact that I don't need you for me to feel happy that I can decide to be joyful with you. I can decide to share love with you. I can decide to be peaceful with you. I can decide that you can't hurt me and that I don't see any justification for wanting to hurt you. And I really want to be responsible for what I believe. So I'm gonna stop here and uh, we're gonna do a quick little recap of the main statements. Let's, let's do the love offering. Uh, I would really thank you and appreciate sharing. I don't know what they did with it, but uh, we'll stuff it in there. <laughs> yeah, we'll stuff it. My companions, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, please go to my website www.earlpurdy.com. I am a full-time teacher of the Course in Miracles, and the Course in Miracles says that God never provides, but it provides to us through, for us through us. Everything comes through us. And so I want to thank you for sharing with me. Uh, if you want to go online, you can use PayPal, Zelle, Zelle, the Cash App, or Venmo, and all you need is my email address. My email address is earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. Earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. Thank those of you uh, who have been very generous with me and thank you. Um, because I don't ever want a person's financial situation to determine whether or not they can come to my class or something that I'm doing. That's why I do it on a donation basis. Is that puts it within the range of everybody. And, and, and my goal is for all parts of myself to wake up. <laughs> every bit of me. Those of you who want to go deeper, and I guarantee you I can go a lot deeper than I'm able to go in the class, uh, then uh, schedule a clarity session with me. Clar schedule a clarity session with me, and we can clear up or give you some new perspectives of things you know you've been dealing with, and something that's got you not feeling good, and you know you need to have, you, in other words, the course says, uh, you reached your limit. I like, to I like to talk to people who reach their limit. Uh, those are the ones that always make changes. <laughs> right. Um, and those of you who are open to the more intuitive, mystical side of things, I'm also an astrologer and a numerologist who specializes in your divine plan. 
why you know how do you act that out? What that what's the form of that? The course is the content of it, but what is the form of it? What's the form it takes? And uh, so uh, that's available. If you go to go to my website, look under Clarity Sessions, you can self book an appointment with me right online. So I look forward to talking to you. If you'd like to be put on a special list of people who uh, are studying the Course in Miracles that are willing, that would like to go into a more advanced level class that I intend to do, then email me and let me know that you want to be a part of the advanced mind training. Okay, which is rooted in the Course in Miracles. So I just want to make that clear. It's like it'll be hell if you're not really rooted in the Course of Miracles. So spare yourself. Okay, okay, because <laughs> it's gonna be strictly for people who are into it, really. Um, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. So um, Thursdays at seven o'clock Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook, seven p.m. Mountain Time. We do hardcore Course in Miracles every Thursday, seven p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. Also, all my classes on YouTube and on my website. Okay. And so we know Sundays we have an opportunity to connect live. So I want to thank those of you who to, took the time to come out, especially in five illusionary bucks a gallon of gas. Okay. <laughs> it's, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, and, and so 1 o'clock, 1555 Race Street. If you're here in Denver, you can come live, 1555 Race Street at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and also online, also online, uh, on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. Okay, here, I'm going to take a couple of minutes. Because the name of the game is what? Remembering. When you're feeling very angry, there's a part of you that believes that you've been attacked. But do you know that when you are angry, it means that you are afraid. An angry person is a fearful person, is an angry person, is a fearful person, is an angry person, is a fearful person, is an angry person, is a fearful person. When you get mad, what is it that you need to try to remember? Try to remember that you're projecting and upset. You're responsible for it. You're responsible for how you feel. 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 For how you feel. So don't blame how you feel on others. Stop blaming how you feel on others. Stop blaming how you feel on others. Stop blaming how you feel on others. Do you know that the reason a person gets angry is because they believe they've been attacked, they believe they've been hurt, and so they feel justified? Do you feel justified in attacking in return? Do you feel justified in attacking in return? And do you feel like you're not responsible for what you are going through with somebody else? Oh, I'm going through this. Do you feel that? <laughs> And if you feel that way, don't you know you're going to come up with the equally irrational premise of attacking that person that you think is hurting you like that? So what do you want to ask yourself? You want to ask yourself, how sane is it for me to believe that I have nothing to do with how I feel? I have nothing to do with how I feel. How sane is it for me to believe that I'm a victim of everything and everybody around me? What do you need to tell yourself? What is it that the Course in Miracles says you need to tell yourself? You need to tell yourself, you cannot be attacked. I cannot be attacked. So what does that mean? Who you really are, what you really are, who you really are, what you really are. Who you really are, 
what you really are cannot be attacked. Your spiritual self, your spiritual self, your true self, your mind, your consciousness, who you really are as a spiritual being, what you are as a light being, who you are beyond the body, who you are for real cannot be attacked. So attack has no justification. Didn't say I didn't believe it. Didn't say that I didn't believe that attack has justification. Oh, I know there's a part of me that feels justified when I get, when I get angry and when I want to attack. But what I need to hear is the truth. And the truth is attack has no justification. So what's the last thought? I am responsible for what I believe. You are responsible for what you believe. And what you accept is true for you, that's what you're going to demonstrate. So what is it that you want to be true for you? What kind of life do you want to have? What kind of person do you want to be? Accept that premise and you're going to start demonstrating it everywhere and you will find yourself demonstrating it all the time. I know you've been loyal to the lies and the deceptions that the world has taught you about your guilt and about your unworthiness, but that's not, not true about you. So don't have a misplaced allegiance. Stop being faithful to ways of thinking that don't serve you. Stop being faithful to ways of thinking that make you feel that make you feel like you are not loved and like you're not enough. You are priceless. You are priceless. The Course of Miracles says you are a priceless part of God's kingdom. Listen, you are priceless. You are priceless. You are a priceless part of God. You are a priceless part of love. You are priceless. You are priceless. You are priceless. You are priceless. You are a priceless part of God's kingdom. You are priceless. You are the treasure. You are a 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 treasure. That's what your partner, your friends, your relatives, your, your mate, that's what they should be reminding you of every day. If they love you, they'll demonstrate that to you and they're showing you that you are a treasure. You are priceless. You are priceless to me. That's what I'm telling each and every one of you. You are a treasure. You are priceless to her. You are a treasure to her. You are priceless to me. Everyone, everyone within the sound of my voice, everyone that listens to anything that comes through me, I am grateful to you. You are priceless to me. You are a treasure to me. I don't want to attack you. I would not want to attack you because I want to show you love. That's all you deserve. That's all you deserve is love. All you deserve is love. Stop being arrogant. What do you mean being arrogant? Believing that your perception of yourself is truer than God's. So God says you are priceless. You are a treasure. You are a treasure. And you don't think you are? Then you're being arrogant. You're thinking that what you think about yourself is truer than what God thinks about you. So stop being arrogant. Stop being arrogant by thinking that you are less than a treasure. You are a treasure. You are priceless. And you are love. My new companions, may the, I thought I'd say horse, may the horse be with you. <laughs> All of a sudden I saw Roy Rogers, a date me, but Roy Rogers go back in the day. And he had a horse named Trigger, at least I think that's what he was saying. But well, anyway, uh, I want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> May the course be with you. Hugs are available. Thank you for showing up. And please listen and watch this at least four times. Four times. And share it. Please share it. Love you so much. Yeah. Let's give it up to us.